We all make decisions in life. And sometimes we make the decision to buy a very large quantity of used books because they're cheap and it gives us the same zhuzh of acquisition that we get from buying new books while we already don't have enough bookshelf space and our new bookshelves are not going to be made for several months because the person who helps build the bookshelves has other projects. So I have three large piles of books on my floor and over the past couple of months I have bought 30 more. So let's talk about them, shall we? Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is a book haul. It's mostly a used book haul, but I did buy four new books. And we're going to be very careful with this here pile because it's precarious. This pile goes all the way to the floor because it's on one of my older piles. I was just on vacation in Crater Lake. There is an indie bookstore. So I went in there blatantly eavesdropped on a fairly long conversation about the local drag show between a trans woman and a drag performer who was there to give posters for his performance to the proprietor of the shop and heard about all of the small town queer drama. I gave my mom two books to buy for me for Christmas um, and then I bought these two myself. Force of Fire by... Sayantani Dasgupta, which I had heard about and requested from the library, but then had to go back to the library because I didn't get around to reading it and I forgot the name. So I'm really glad that I saw it because otherwise I was going to completely forget and not know how to look it up. And pretty obvious vibes from the cover. It's a middle grade fantasy. Pinky hails from a long line of Rakosh resistors, demons who have spent years building interspecies relationships working together to achieve their goal of overthrowing their snaky oppressors and taking back their rights. Sounds pretty cool. Um, and it's a series, and I do like series. Um, and then we have Heartwood Hotel, A True Home, which I got because it was small and less expensive <laughs> than most books there, um, as was this. A lot of middle grades um, are a lot less pricey than other, other books. I didn't know that until very recently, because I, I don't usually buy books new, so I don't actually know what they cost usually. Look at that cover, it's so fallish and nice. Yeah, my resistance goes way down when I'm in an indie store versus say Barnes and Noble. In Barnes and Noble, I can usually restrain myself, although we will get to a Barnes and Noble purchase later. Um, I will put in the description the name of the shop and their uh... <sighs> website if they have one, which, which I'm sure they do. Now we have a series of about 15 books that are from my library sale that just happened. So these cost between um, 50 cents and two dollars and I found some real good finds this time, mostly from the junior section. So we have The Secret Garden, which I have never read. I saw a movie version when I was a little kid and I don't remember what happened. Uh, plus it's pink and I do collect pink books specifically. Um, it doesn't have the most inspiring cover, but the spine is good. But yeah, I've heard really good things and I've also heard like that people who reread it as adults have continued to like it, so I'm hoping that I will enjoy it as well. This is a book that I bought a couple of years ago, but I'm pretty sure I never showed you. Um, this I bought new for a fair amount of money. Um, it's beautiful on the outside and on the inside are beautiful big old pictures of plants and animals. I still haven't really gone through this very much. I think it, yeah, it has a ribbon marker. Oh, and it also has rocks. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great and I should put it in my living room and maybe I'll actually get it out and look at it and maybe my parents might also enjoy that a bit. Then we have Dancing Home uh, by Alma Flor Ada, and basically I got it because it is a middle grade by a Latina author, um, and that's good enough for me. These books are making me sneeze because they are old, dusty. Um, this one's a library copy, and the ones that aren't library copies that are at the sale are like donated from people's home collections, so they are they tend to be fairly old and dusty and 
smell like old books, which is nice, but it, it, it can make a person sneeze. Looks like it's a bit about the immigrant experience, as well as learning about uh, their heritage through dance. Runaway King uh, by Jennifer A. Nielsen. It is book four, um, but I'm hoping that this will inspire me to get uh, the rest of the books from the library and check it out because it sounds really fun. Darius the Great is Not Okay from the YA section. I've heard a lot of good things about this. Then we have Champion also from the YA section. I read the first book in this series but I never got around to the second and I believe this is the third book. Um, so I would like to pick this back up because they were really good. Then I found actually two books of, of these but I left Blue Star's book uh, for somebody else to find. But Firestar's Quest is part of the series that's covered up by leaves right now but it's the warrior series by Aaron Hunter um, which I absolutely adored as a kid and um, I don't like where the later stories started going they were darker and kind of depressing but the first two series I really enjoyed um, and everything about Firestar is my favorite he's my favorite little boy he's a pretty little yellow kitty and yeah this is about cats who live in clans and uh, fight over territory and have community. So this is a standalone that's set between a couple of the series. Forest of the Pygmies by Isabella Allende and I got this because Isabella Allende wrote it and I've heard really good things about that author. Oh it was translated from Spanish. I want to read more translated works. Fridays with the Wizard. This is a continuation of a series that I have started. I think I've read just the first two books, so I need to read the third. Yeah, I need to read Thursdays with the Crown before I can start this one, but uh, they're really sweet stories and they are by Jessica Day George, who I really liked several of her books. Yeah, she wrote Dragon Slippers, um, that whole series, which is one of my favorite series. Then we have The Inventors by Patrick Carmen, and it's about kids who invent things and uh, looks like it's going to be sci-fi-ish. Which is another of my favorite series from when I was a kid. I had uh, like the first volume and reread it a bunch of times that so that it was falling apart. Um, lost that one in the fire but uh, I'd like to gradually collect them. This is volume 14. I think I've read through like 30 or so and I just really love the friendships and also the magic is fun. It is the almost last roundup uh, of the Hank the Cowdog series by John R. Erickson. I grew up with the Hank the Cowdog series specifically on tape. We would get them on tape whenever we were going on a long drive for vacation and uh, we would listen to a few of them and that would really help us kids um, and probably the adults as well to pass the time while we were going on hours long drives. They are very funny. Yeah, sweetness and humor are the big markers of the series and there are a lot of them. This is number 65. So I accidentally, because I bought them separately, one at the library sale and one at a thrift shop, uh, got two copies of Magic, book one of Septimus Heap by Angie Sage, uh, because, and at the thrift shop, I also found the second book, uh, Flight. Um, so for once I had the first and second book in a series, but since I have two of the first one, I'm gonna put that straight in the donut nate pile but yeah i forgot that i had already gotten this and you know it looks really good like that's gonna draw you in if you see it at a library sale right and it was again in the middle grade section then this was at a thrift store uh, a plague of unicorns as you can see there's a bunch of unicorns on the cover i like unicorns this is middle grade with unicorns this got knocked didn't it the, in the first autumn of aliens rule when the golden apples were at their ripest, the battle lines were drawn. Monks against unicorns. The Magic Thief. This is the first book in a series that I've actually read the second book of and still own the second book of. 
and I've been wanting to continue that series and I think my library doesn't have the books so I'm really glad I found this so I could um, read more of that series and um, maybe it'll be good enough I will search for the third book on thrift books it has a map uh, the Mad Wolf's Daughter when it last became a legend by Diane McGrath and it is about a young Scottish girl on the way to save her father and brothers. This one I got from Thrift Books because I've been wanting it for a while. My library doesn't have it. The Book Wanderers of Pages and Co. Uh, by Anna James and it's got a cat on the cover. I've heard really good things about this whole series um, but I haven't been able to read it before. It's kind of about um, books and book characters coming alive um a la ink heart um but different and yeah it's supposed to be really good for people who love books a book that i got new that i actually pre-ordered is witchlings the golden frog games because i wanted to support this author i really liked the first book i think our little trio is really sweet and i really like their friendship and the different weaknesses and strengths that they have and the magic system is fun and the whole um working against an unfair system i enjoy it's by claribel a ortega and it looks like different characters are going to be most prominent in different books because last time this one was in kind of the front most prominent area and now they've switched to this one so i'm hoping we get one that's extra about our third character next um, I think it's at least going to be a trilogy and yeah I just really liked everything about the first book so I'm excited for this. Don't ask why I haven't read it yet. It came out a couple months ago. Then my Barnes and Noble splurge. Um, it was you know middle grade price but still uh, <laughs> I was in the middle grade section and I saw Ophie's Ghosts and I want to own more of Justina Ireland's books and I really loved Ophie's Ghosts. I just talked about Ophie's Ghosts in a tag, um, so I won't go into it much here, but it's a girl who can see ghosts in 1922, which is later than I thought it was. Then this was at a thrift store, Scandalous Secrets by Cynthia Williams. Um, I want to read more black romance. That's, that's the reason. I've steadily been working through Beverly Jenkins' backlog and a couple of other authors I enjoy, but I want to find more. I don't remember if this was from thriftbooks.com or if I found this in a thrift store. It was exceptionally lucky if I found it in a thrift store. Um, but I have talked about how much I love this book. It's all flowery and beautiful and it's all magical. Yeah, it gives me the good autumn feels. I found a couple of poetry books um, thrifted. Uh, their collections from December and October of 2021. And I think they are a bunch of different authors. Work is just all collected together. So maybe I can find some new poets that I like. And also I just generally want to read more poetry because sometimes I really, really like it. This one was also thrifted, but in excellent condition. Um, Starry River of the Sky by Grace Lynn. Uh, I read this a couple years ago um, and it was very good. It is like a collection of stories, um, mythology and folklore that are told um, inside the story. So story within a story which I enjoy and um, it's about the meaning of stories and how important they are. This one I did find in the thrift store. It's The Wild Ones by Nafisa Azad. And it's uh, an arc, according to this little thing here. It might have a couple typos in it, but uh, the cover is still as beautiful as the regular edition. And um, I've been wanting to read this one for a while as well. Uh, but this is one that had to go back to the library because I didn't get around to it when I had it out. Before the fire, I had like the seventh book in this series. And it looked like this, a lot like this, but it was purple. Um, and I'm feeling like this is the first book in the series um, because it doesn't have a number on it, unless they're like companion books or something. I'm glad I was reminded of the existence of this author uh, because it was really cool and I was really interested in it. I just never read it because it was not the first in the series. So <sighs> it's about dragons. <laughs> 
And that was the last one. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to leave an emoji, how about uh, a book or book stack? And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.